What's going on guys, welcome to the video. Before we get into it, I should just say two things. Number one, if you are competing at the Summer Shredding Classic or if you want to attend the Summer Shredding Classic, Ashley and I did a Q&A video going over every single question that you guys have had and we like went into super good detail. So the first thing in the description box, click that link, watch the video and get the answers to all your questions. Number two, if you're interested in snagging some of my sold out pre-workout from Ghost, they saved a few hundred units and they are actually making this live today at 12 p.m. Central. So I'm uploading at 10 a.m. Two hours from now, this will go live on the website. And at the same time, this is actually going live on the UK Ireland website as well. So if you guys are in the UK or Ireland, want to snag some, you can. Or if you're in the US at 12, they have a few left that are going to go up on the website. So go snag them if you want one. That'll be the last appearance this pre-workout will ever make. So. With that all said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the vlog. What's up, guys? Hey, I, don't need, I need to clarify something with y'all, you know? Uh, I'm getting a lot of comments and stuff. Everyone thinks I can't have sex anymore, and let me clarify, okay? When you do videos, you want to get a good thumbnail, good title, obviously. You have to like go a little bit extreme and exaggerate things a little bit to get people to watch the video. Then you give good information, right? That's how it works. I'm good, man. I'm good. Me and Heidi are good. Everything's fine. Um, I will say, like, the desire to have, like, crazy, crazy, frequent, frequent, very frequent set, like, that's, yeah, it's down a little bit, but, like, I'm good, bro. I'm not down. I'm looking up, you know. I just had to say that to the vlog. Uh, I'm gonna have some breakfast, I'll show you guys what I eat. It's already afternoon, like past noon. I woke up really early, went to bed really late, and I'm starving, so here's my meal. <laughs> Three packets of oatmeal, one whole egg, four egg whites, and one serving of the turkey sausage I like that has kind of high fat. So getting a good amount of fat here, about 50 grams of carbs, and roughly 45 grams of protein, 50 grams of protein or so. Good pre-workout meal, because we're gonna go to the gym. I haven't weighed myself. Um, like Heidi's scale is a few pounds off, and so I just chose not to weigh myself the whole time I was there. So I think I'm gonna wait, ooh, there's one. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow to weigh myself in the morning, but I'm definitely gonna hit away, and I think. Mmm. Gotta take a breath before because I can't breathe so before I chew, you know. Mm. Dude, did you see another one of my videos had a dislike button on it? Yeah. So annoying. I haven't talked about it in YouTube. It's not even worth talking about them haters, man. You know, no matter how many dislike bots haters can send over. Every video, all the content, everything's every gonna keep coming full force to you guys. In fact, I want you to do me a favor right now, give this video a thumbs up, and I want you to comment for the last like 20, last three weeks of summer shredding. We have three more weeks. What type, what's your favorite thing about the videos? Like, do you wanna see more raw stuff? Do you wanna see uh, like raw stuff in the gym? Do you wanna see instructional stuff? Do you wanna see like more sort of raw, draw, like drawn out real moments where I'm feeling like crap? Do you wanna like, do you wanna see more edits? Comment down below what you specifically want to see, and maybe and I are going to do some reading, check out the feedback, and uh, put out some badass content for you guys for the next three weeks. Let's do it. Let's do it. Know your home when it's raining, humid, and scorching hot. Wouldn't want it any other way. We got this, man. We got this. We got this. <laughs> hey, uh, new flavor of Oh Yeah Bars. I found this in San Antonio. Peanut butter chocolate cake. How good does that sound? Uh, I give it like a 8 out of 10, but it has 9 grams of fat. It's a little much for me. And 24 carbs. So, yeah, maybe. Maybe later. <laughs> some sort of branding on the front and back to add some branding. Childhood, how you were brought up. Yeah, man, so uh, kind of going back to when I was raised, I, there was nothing really 
unique, I would say. I mean, my mom, my dad, uh, and my brother, and that was our whole family. Growing up in elementary school, was very, very quiet. Like, very, very, very quiet, very shy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think out of elementary, like, kind of into middle school, when I, you know, hitting teen years, I just sort of shut off from people. I was very, very insecure. I was very... I don't know, I just didn't want to ever be wrong or didn't want to be judged or laughed at or anything mm-hmm. or embarrassed. And um, that was something I really dealt with through all of my middle school, high school years. I, I played instruments. I know you play bass, right? Mm-hmm. Bass, bass, I play guitar. Yeah. Right. And that was sort of my outlet. But when I went into uh, high school, I was just, I was six foot tall, man, 120 pounds. And for me, I was just tired of being the, the scrawny, scrawny, scrawny kid. And, you know, going into high school, we saw all these big guys and football players and things like that. And that was sort of my... That's when I picked up fitness and I started at a three day training camp, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And honestly, that slowly started pulling me out of my, my little shell that I was in. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that confidence that was gained through seeing results in the gym and kind of seeing the mirror change a little bit really started transforming me and taking me out of that little hole that I was in. Towards the end of my second semester, uh, at the time, I was watching a ton, a ton, a ton of Greg Plitt, a ton of Matt Ogus. I was watching Chris Jones, Physiques of Greatness, and Scott Herman, all these YouTube channels that were putting out information. And I was spending hours a day watching these videos and even re-watching and re-watching and trying these workouts and trying these tips. And at, at a certain point, I realized, man, I'm spending so much time doing this. I feel like I, I, I have a really good grasp of this. I've been training for four or five years now. In turn, I was bored and honestly I was out of boredom. I was, I was bored. I was kind of curious. I wonder if I make some YouTube videos. I'm going to make a video on tricep extensions and talk about how you want to do the slight rotation at the bottom or if, like, you know, just a quick little chest fly tip or how you can work the upper chest a little bit more that region. If you kind of go from a low to high angle, just small little things like that. And that slowly started gaining traction. And it was actually funny because I was literally the laughing stock of my hallway. I think the biggest piece of advice is to simply, you have to be able to put a little bit of emotion aside and put your head down. And if you can find out what you like, it's almost like you have to allow yourself to get obsessed with that thing. If it's fitness, if it's powerlifting, if it's nutrition coaching, if it, whatever it is, if it's golfing or tennis, whatever that may be, you have to allow yourself hours and hours and hours a day to become a master at your craft, right? And if you can become really, really good at something, then you can eventually be able to take that skill and you're going to you need to fall in love with that thing that you're doing and if you don't love that thing you're trying to get really good at then it's just not going to be sustainable and if but if you do find something you love and you get really good at it you fall in love with that process and you're not actually working and so that's how something magical happens and from there you're able to transform that into whatever you really want it to be and you can offer value to people as well like eric clapton i don't know if you guys no, Eric Clapton, he locked himself in a in his yeah, house no for years <laughs> to practice guitar, to be a master at his craft, yep. and then he became Eric Clapton. You have to allow yourself, there's like a 10,000 hour rule, 10,000 hours of a given thing to become a master. And if you can become that and get really good at that, and if you love it, that's a, that's a combination, then you're going to be successful once you do. Um, go sent stickers already they have they have already sent what we're gonna put in the bags like samples shaker cups I'm they're not sending shaker cups. Shakers. Okay. all right Julian Smith Rob Lipset Raymond the online coach Emily Hayden and it's all we've booked so far right for sure we're still waiting on Here. oh my god guys guys some, oh my god, we gotta show you this. Dude, major, talk about major upgrades. Holy crap, holy crap. Come here, come here, come here. Derek, you're not excited like I am. Yeah, you were excited. Oh, I was excited. Guys, you're not gonna believe what we just got. Holy, oh my god. What? Wait, what? Is this staying here? <laughs> no. Oh, we have a big dumpster, so this helps with all the trash because the warehouse has been really dirty. <laughs> Five businesses share one little dumpster. Right? It's not. Five businesses share that. This is all. Little... This is all from launch. This is just all this trash? trash was launched. Hey, you guys uh, had it. Thank you all so much for the last launch. Next launch is gonna be. Derek's gonna get mad at me because I'm gonna say a rough date right now. June 10. June 10. It's probably not gonna be June 10. June 10. Joggers galore, track top, sports shorts. Yeah. All right, 
Dude, for the first time in my life, I was doing the stairs and I literally slipped, bro. I slipped, my hand went like that because I'm, so, I'm sweating so much that the stairs are so wet. My foot went off and I like, caught myself like in here and luckily I broke my fall. But, you guys, screw it, I'm gonna show you guys my physique. Um, what are we, like 20 something days, 23, 24 days, something like that. But here's my physique. Um, obviously I trained legs today. I do cardio, so my upper body is super, super flat right now, but here you can kind of see how I look. It's kind of like different lighting than I normally record. But here I'm just like, make it a wider shot so you guys can see like, here, here I am, this is me, man, this is me. Not flexing, normal, like this. Vascular is the heat, but not pumped or anything. So what I want to talk to you guys about today is the fact that life doesn't stop just because you decide to diet. I posted my video yesterday, or the last one you guys saw, and a lot of comments were, oh my gosh, just stop complaining, bro. Like, you're so whiny. You're not motivating people. But the thing about it, guys, like, for me, for you watching this video, life doesn't stop because you decide to diet, because you decide to get shredded. Bill, bills have to be paid. You, if you're in school, academics have to come first. You have to work, you have a job, you have to provide. If you have family, you provide for the family that you have. Like nothing slows down just because you decide to take something else on in life. And like me personally, I'm, I'm juggling a lot. We have a lot of businesses, the energy drink, the gym. We're putting on a show, the Summer Shredding Classic on June 15th, like Alphalete, all this stuff is happening YouTube every other day, but dieting is another variable that we add to the mix. And you have to be able to take in the variables and figure yourself out. And like the reason I love dieting and like actually pushing my, not just getting like lean, but actually pushing myself is because I make myself uncomfortable. And when I'm uncomfortable, I force myself to evolve and to become better and to be able to manage things better, be able to put my attention here. I find the energy to go do my cardio because I said I was gonna do it. I find the energy to make a video every other day, not because it's my job. I could, you don't think I could run businesses and post half the content? We could, but I make a verbal commitment to you guys and like to myself and like you follow through with what you say and like that's why I love fitness and dieting because like if we say we're gonna do something, we say we're gonna beat our physique from last year, we're gonna beat our physique from last year, there's no question about it. And that just comes down to practice, that act of saying something you're gonna do and following through with it, whether it be your job, your your career, with your girlfriend, with your family, I'm gonna be a good, I'm gonna do this for you, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna handle this, I'm gonna take care of this bill, like that becomes, that's on you. And it's just a character building block that, I don't know, I feel like fitness just added so much to my life because it finally gave me, it forced myself to be, to have structure. I'm not, I've not, like in the past, I wasn't really a structured person and I would kind of just half-ass my way through things. I was never really like great at anything. I could, you know, I was all right at things, but fitness just gave me that thing that taught me true like discipline. And I finally saw progress in something in my life and like, then I wanted to apply that to other things. and. I just think it's very important to stick with your word, man. Um, you know that life doesn't stop just because you decide to take on a challenge. You learn how to adapt and you make it work. And if I'm not super positive in all my videos or whatever, I'm motivating people, I'm sounding pessimistic, it's you know, I'm being real with you guys, man. This is the real parts of the diet. This is the real life. There's stresses, there's things that happen, there's bad things that happen. Not everything's happy-go-lucky every day. Not everything's a breeze. Shit, stressful. We're trying to grow. We're trying to push ourselves. And that's what this series is, man. It's something to add onto your life to teach you more lessons to become better. So with all that said, I'm going to shower. Go watch the Rockets. Ca I almost said Cavs. The Rockets Warriors game tonight with some friends. And that's going to wrap up today's vlog. So we'll see you tomorrow. Sometimes I make this life thing What's up? Man. Let's go in. I already weighed myself, so I already know what to expect. I am excited about this, man. I am happy about this. Heidi doesn't have a scale in her place. Or she does, and it's off until I chose not to weigh myself. So our lowest weight in the whole prep has been 176.2 pounds. One seventy four point four is where we are today. Very, very light. Feeling good. And I think I'm gonna head downstairs, eat some breakfast. We're gonna get a fairly early work. Actually, let's go to the gym pretty soon. Let's just, all right, yeah, let's go. I could change. Let's get the day started. Ice, ice, ice. It's gonna be a right, right, right. Tomorrow's gonna be okay. One moment, one shot. Holy shit. 
that's happening so fast. What the heck? Wow. That warehouse is going up like, dude, we'll be moved in by the end of the summer. For sooner than that, it'll be done by next month, man. They told us August, but the rate that's going up we should be in there by July, which will be sick because we have a massive August launch. Let's go check it out. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, so now for the main topic of the video. We're going to talk some business. If you aren't interested in the business stuff, then thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. But if you are interested, then stay tuned. What I'm looking at right now is the new Alfleet Warehouse, right? Now, this is actually two separate buildings. It's going to be one building, but divided into two separate leases. Uh, we were planning on taking the right-hand side, which comes out to right at 10,000 square feet. I think it's like 9,800 something square feet. And our current warehouse for Alfleet is only 4,600. So we'd be more than doubling the space. And Alfleet has been growing like crazy every year. We've literally been doubling every single year. And for us to double from what we did in 2017, to 2018 is a very, very big jump and it's gonna require a lot more space, a lot more like back-end work and I 100% think we can do it. And then the next year would be even way bigger obviously and it pretty much got me thinking you know we're building this warehouse it's supposed to be done in August, we'll be moving in. We have a lot of stuff coming for fall like just in I don't, I don't know if, how much to share, but like just in hoodie fabric items, so like performance hoodies and lifestyle like women's stuff, just in hoodies we have, I think like 1,400 boxes coming in in hoodies, um, which 1,400, but that wouldn't even fit in our current warehouse right now. And we just have so much product and so many SKUs and so many, like there's so much growth coming that it kind of came up to me last week. I was like, man, maybe I should just get the whole fucking building this whole thing, right? 20,000 square feet, or right, almost 20,000 square feet. And if we did that, we would have our offices on this side, or like on that side, which we were already planning to have with two bathrooms. And then we could also have offices on this side, on this left-hand side. And then I was like, man, maybe in a building, because it's really hard for you to work at the gym, just because like there's so many people there, there's so many people coming in. It's like, it's a, it's a destination. It's not really like a work spot where you can go and not get distracted. And so I was, man, maybe Nabil and I can like work on this side. Maybe we can like bring the whole studio set up for all the product shots, because I really want to reamp like the website and reamp the quality and just like have more options and different backdrops. Maybe we can do that in like this side of the warehouse or in the office. And like maybe, I don't know, there's, there's other companies I'm working on right now that I can't talk about, but they're like making these steps in progression. And like once those happen and this happens and that like all these variables come into play, like I can see us needing the space and just I, and I know we could probably make the 10,000 work with Alfleet, but just kind of thinking ahead, I would hate for us to have that half and then someone, some other company comes and leases this half and then I have to go find another warehouse somewhere else to like do the same kind of stuff, you know? So I'm like, man, it could be cool to just have everything here in one, even though it's gonna be a lot of rent and I feel like we definitely wouldn't be utilizing it to its capacity. It is a three year lease and so I think that within three years we could probably fill it up. Um, like pull my car into the warehouse, just like the old days, man. And dude, maybe we could even, I could even paint like the black and gold wall, just like it was at the old gym. Like I'll get the same lady to come out and paint the exact same thing on the same exact wall on this building. That could be kind of cool. Sick. That could be nostalgic, but I don't know. So to rent out the whole thing with two offices, like one on each side, you'd probably be looking at sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars or so per month for three years. So yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of money um, versus about half of that for just that one space for Alfleet. But so it's kind of like, do I want to justify this space over here? Not just for Alfleet, because we can make that other one work for Alfleet, but just making this one work for like us and future projects and maybe potentially Alfleet. Regardless, they have to put a divider wall up, and so what our guys said, we'll put the divider wall up, get the fire marshal, get inspected, then we cut a big ass like door into the thing and have like a connecting unit, so we can like if we need to use the space on this one, we could and come back and forth. I think it'd be a really cool environment. Uh, it could be like a work zone. It could be 
I don't know. I'm really trying not to travel as much. Um, and I really want to make home like home, you know? And I feel like right now when I go into the office at the gym, it's just, like, even now, like, we, you know, we were going to come over here and film this and then we get caught up and like people want to talk and take photos and stuff, which is great. And, but I, I feel like this could be like our own little spot, man. Just a very expensive spot that I don't know if I'm going to utilize for probably like a few more, maybe like a year. I don't know if we're going to need it. It's a lot of money. But it's like 180 grand for some space. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's a tough decision. It's something I'm just trying to think about. And again, with the growth of Alfleet, like, of course, we ideally want to sell through inventory. I'm just kind of talking a lot right now, but you want to sell through the inventory. So ideally, we'd never need 20,000 of like space to hold stuff unless we're about to launch like Black Friday or something. And then, of course, the majority of that inventory like, goes away. And so then we have the space again. Well, I don't know. That's a big financial choice to make but I have to make it fairly soon I already inquired um, and like they're leasing these things out like crazy super quick because they're like brand new pretty good price for the size and everything and it's like right behind the gym so I can have like everything here oh, I, don't know. I would just hate to see that so I go so we have to divide up again and like have three different places all scattered around you know and I think Heidi's gonna be moving into Houston soon and she's gonna be getting warehouse like somewhere probably like 10, 15 minutes away. Um, so like that's happening. And it'd be like, dude, imagine having like our own office, like maybe put like a, like a, like a all glass, like board to write like stuff on and just like have it clean. So it's not like, you know what I mean? Like that Alfie, that office thing there. And like, I don't know, it should be, uh, I don't know. I'm just thinking, but tough decision. What do y'all think we should do? Make the 10,000 square foot work for as long as we can. And then if we come up to the growth and if the demand is there, then go find a spot. Maybe we can even get one of these spots, but maybe it'll be taken or make the jump now. Put our head down. We're going to keep fucking growing like we are and uh, take that 20,000 and pay a lot of rent and pay whatever that is yearly. And the thing about rent, man, people are going to be like, why don't you build? Why don't you build? Why don't you build? We've looked in a building in the past and I've, I swear, like we've gone, we've, I've gotten, uh, quotes. I've gotten, I've, I've lit, I almost bought some land out in Rosenberg, um, a few acres, but it's just not really, I just, I don't want to build because we keep growing so quick, you know? And like, that's a, such a long-term decision and I don't know. We're just kind of leasing out right now. This will be a three-year commitment. I'm fine with that and I'm cool with that. Cool with that. So, yeah, that's where we're at right now. I need to make the decision, and I guess I'll let you guys know when I do. But thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one.